overflows. Enlightenment and identity crisis. Both love and enlightenment evolve from the same root. Love is micro, a drop, fulfillment within. Existence, on the other hand, is overflowing love, harmony and oneness each moment. When the fragrance and beauty of love within overflows and merges with cosmic presence, love is known as enlightenment. Just as the chemical composition of the drop and ocean remains the same, so too the intrinsic quality of love and enlightenment remains the same. Love is the union, a way to experience bliss or anand when two forms interact with one another. Journey of love begins through form. Unless it reaches formless realm, bliss of this union is not experienced between, between form and formless is identity crisis. Enlightenment is also taste of love or bliss with the whole existence. This has two steps, drop merging into the ocean and ocean merging into the drop. When someone transcends the narrow boundaries of selfish, egocentric realm and lives for the transformation of consciousness, his light eternal manifest as awakening to wake up from the deep slumber and kindle the spark of divinity in anyone that comes in contact. In this process, identity crisis is the only obstruction, but as to experience bliss of male-female union, both have to strip completely of all egocentric identities. So too, for enlightenment, you have to realize truth that your real existence is beyond all identities. This realization brings awareness. This awareness becomes your moment-to-moment -moment consciousness. Living by this consciousness each finite moment or traversing through life's road, one attains to bliss or anand. You are then such chit anand, truth, consciousness and bliss. The taste of one's formless existence Buddha called as enlightenment. You exist as a form, but you are unaware of your formless existence. You live within and guided by your formful existence. Nirvana or enlightenment means formless. The Nirvana should come. This, the composition of six stanzas, a four line each, is to, towards this. You do not want to be either this or that. If you want to be this, not that, then what do you want to be? Your mind cannot understand this because your mind always wants to be something. If I say, I don't want to be this, I don't want to be that, you would think, oh, something super, not super. Oh, so emptiness, not emptiness, nothingness, not nothingness. That is what is conveyed through this composition, Nirvan Shatkam of Shankar. The Sutra emphasizes on our true self as truth, consciousness and bliss. Ever existing, ever consciousness, ever new bliss. Generally, this true self is covered by bio, psycho, social self. We always attribute to one of them as our real self. Biological attributions, 
like I am strong, I am short, I am fat, I am tall, etc. Psychological attributions like I am a, I am a genius, I am dull, I am emotional, I am rational, etc. Social attributions like I am a father, a teacher, a doctor, politician or anything else. In this composition, Shankar explains how the sense of biopsychosocial self covers our true self and how to overcome. This is the near shore of awakening. The other shore happens when you when on its own. According to Buddha and Shankar, the other shore happens on its own according to Buddha and Shankar. However, according to Sufism, this comes through the Sheikh or the Master who is outwardly a form and inwardly he is not only aware of his formfulness, emptiness and dwells in that state. The composition says, the first stanza, Mano Buddh Ahankar Chittani Naham Nacha Shrotra Jivve Nacha Pran Netri Nacha Vyom Bhuvir Na Tejo Na Vayu Chidanand Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham Neither am I the mind. You have to understand the distinction between brain and the mind. The brain is part of the body Every child is born with a fresh brain, but not with a fresh mind. Mind is a layer of conditioning around the consciousness. You will not remember it. That is why there is discontinuity. If even for a single moment you become aware that mind is not there, but I am, you have reached a deep core of truth. Then it will be easy to drop the mind. You are not the mind. Otherwise, how can you drop yourself? First, the identification has to be dropped. The identification, as I said, I am a genius, I am a father, I am a mother, I am a doctor, I am an engineer. When this drops, then mind automatically drops. The identification has to drop first then the mind can be dropped when all identifications with the mind are dropped. Then you are a watcher on the hill and the mind left deep down in the darkness of the valley. When you are on the sunlit peak, just a pure witness, seeing, watching, but not getting identified with anything good or bad, sinner or saint, this or that, in that witnessing all questions, all problems, all pains dissolve. The mind melts, evaporates. You are left as a pure being, just a pure existence, a breathing, a beating of heart. Utterly in the moment, no past, no future, hence blissfulness. To know inner peace, we need to move into a different region from the mental to that of consciousness. In other words, we need to move from thinking to being. For that, we don't need to control time or stop the mind, but to understand it and familiarize ourselves with its nature. What? Watch your own mind for a few moments and you will see that it is the conveyor belt of ideas, identities, theories, arguments, prejudices, doubts, beliefs, dreams, imaginations, aspirations, 
and the whole gamut of feelings from joy to despair. In some respects, the mind is like a child. It is always on the go. It is also inquisitive, constantly wanting your attention and to be part of whatsoever you are doing. If you are dealing with a very active child, as an intelligent parent, you do not try to stop its energy. You understand that its constant movement and its curiosity are natural, but they can be channelized into some form of creativity or physical activity, even if that is just running around the house. You can do something similar when your mind is on overdrive. <clears throat> Redirect the energy that fuels the mind rather than trying to suppress like jumping, jogging, running, things like that, you are channeling your energy into the other direction, right? So rather suppressing the mind. For example, you may be ruminating about an important interview or feeling anxious about some test results. When you become aware of how manic your mind is, only making the situation worse. Find a more useful outlet for some of the energy, for example, running, swimming, playing tennis, or dancing, or even cleaning the floor can provide an effective and practical release of the mental and physical tensions. If your mind is active, but your physical energy is very low, if you are in pain or confined to bed, you will need another option. The method is known as gibberish, is simple and effective. It is speaking nonsense sounds and maybe something you remember from the childhood, nor the intelligence or ego, nor a storehouse of the memory or intellect. Enough for now.